Hello, this is Noreen Crone Findlay from TottyTalksCrafts.com, and I am the author of Potholder Loom Weaving. I've done a lot of videos about weaving on the potholder loom, and today this one is uh, this particular video is going to show you a couple of things. Uh, one of the things that I twig to as being a very useful sort of a thing is a pouch to carry hand sanitizer or your sunglasses or doggy walk bags or whatever something small and handy that you want close at hand uh, our little dog oh she picks up things on the ground that you just really don't want her to pick up and so sometimes that means getting your fingers in that mouth and pulling out the chicken bones or whatever it is that she's picked up which makes me want to reach for the hand sanitizer really fast and not be digging around in my pocket well a girlfriend of mine uh, one of our dear friends had sewed herself some uh, pouches that she put her hand sanitizer in and I thought oh the potholder loom would be a great way to make uh, pouches so that you can clip it either to your belt loop or your the edge of your jacket or uh, the handle of your purse or whatever and then your hand sanitizer is right close and you don't have to take gross fingers and go rooting through your bag or pocket to get it out so I um, figured out that uh, for this particular size I don't know how many ounces that is Two fluid ounces, 60 ml size of hand sanitizer fits beautifully in a six inch square pot holder. Square. And I used loops to make a bunch of um, squares. And I'm just going to run through with you. I'm going to show you, first of all, some variations on color and texture that I did with the weaving. Then I'll show you how I sew them together. And then I'm going to show you different ways of attaching different kinds of connectors, whether you choose to use a carabiner or um, a, a simpler kind of a clip. This one I think I'll probably take the, well, maybe that, that might be handy to leave that brass loop on. I don't know. Uh, or a swivel clip of either description. Anything that's going to be um, make your pouch easy to clip on and off of things so that you can have whatever you want in your bag, in your little pouch, close at hand, so you don't have to go rooting through your pocket. So this is just a one color of loops woven with, you know, the warp and the uh, weft uh, loops being exactly the same color. Now, when you use just one color, you can play with um, texture in, a, in but you can, I mean, you can do texture with um, multiple colors. Oh, and also too, you can make your squares uh, with yarn too, if you prefer. I decided that, uh, now this one, I don't know if this is going to show up very well, showing the, hmm, okay there, that shows it a bit better. This is a twill, the three row, three stitch repeat twill from the Potholder Loom book, using one set of warps, uh, one set of loops across all the way over under those uh, two uh, strands of the loop. I thought that would be fun. I experimented with doing um, the uh, just plain weaving going over two sets of loops at a time and under two sets of loops at a time and so you get quite a, um, a pronounced texture which I quite like and because you didn't get much um, impact with the uh, with just the regular twill I thought how about since this one worked so well to do the um, the twill working over and under two sets at a time. So I did the same three stitch repeat, treating two sets of strands as if they were one. And uh, you get a really wonderful uh, texture then. The I want to show you the impact of changing colors. Here is the Stepping Stones pattern from the Potholder Loom Weaving Book, done with blue and white, and yellow and white, and let's put the, those aligned in the same way, and blue and yellow. Very Swedish looking. 
so your your color choices really change uh, the impact of your square. And of course, um, good old um, simple one one uh, checkerboard warp with one color, weave with another. Now you get the um, oh one of my favorite things, so simple, the hound's tooth. Just two strands of dark, two strands of light. Same thing, weaving two strands of dark, or two loops of dark and two loops of white weaving. You get a bit more of a plaid when you go with three sets of loops across and then weaving with three sets of your alternating colors. So if you switch out your colors by instead of having just three, 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 three across, you add in your third color just to switch it up and to make it a bit more plaid like. Same thing here, just playing with plaids. This last one is fun because I wanted to get vertical lines going up the pot holder loom, I mean pot holder square, but I wanted to have a border across the top. So I warped dark light all the way across. I wove dark light up to where I wanted to place the border. And then I wove two strands of light, I mean two loops of light, like one white loop, one yellow loop, then one blue loop, and then finished with one yellow loop. And so by switching out from going one, 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 to going two, one, and back to one. That's how you get your, uh, your shift from the uh, vertical stripes to the horizontal stripes. So that's just a few notes about color and texture. So let's take one of these squares and I'll show you um, that the sewing on, uh, sewing together process when you're folding um, and stitching your edges together, you can, if you want to have quite a pronounced um, edge, then work just over the, um, the loops that are lying together right along the edges there. If you want to have your edge to be smoother rather than to have that, you know, well-defined ridge, then I'm going to show you what I prefer to do actually is to work with, um, I have put just good old crochet cotton, a single strand, and I left, um, I tied a knot and I left an end of about an inch and tied that knot and now I'm going through the the strand and that's going to lock it on quite nicely. I like to have that inch um, so that it's uh, well and truly hidden inside. Now I want this to be quite a smooth edge so I'm going to pick up one outside loop and go across and pick up the next outside loop and I'm going to continue all the way around just picking up not both loops, only the outside ones. And that's going to give me, and when I pull up quite hard, that gives me a very clean finish to my edging. But if you do prefer to have the more pronounced edge that, that you can see both um, rows of the edge of the square, then just work with by picking up this loop and then this loop. And that will give you um, the, the more ridge kind of finish. So what you do is you just keep stitching all the way around and then there's a strand there, a strand of my silver hair. Okay, and we'll pull up on this, going around the corner. I keep kind of tugging. See how the stitching just vanishes? 
oops, yeah, it vanished there because it was out of focus. But uh, the when you pull up tight on it, and because uh, the number 10 crochet cotton is so sturdy, you can pull quite hard on it. If you don't have number 10 crochet cotton, you can use yarn. Um, acrylic yarn is really good for this because it's very sturdy. Or you can use multiple strands of regular sewing yarn. Now, I have just left a loop at the upper corner. You want that loop to stay um, up at the top corner there. You don't want to start, I wouldn't want to start the sewing at this corner and then work around. That would defeat the purpose of that loop being there because that loop is what I'm going to uh, attach my um, whatever kind of toggle or uh, um, uh, clamp or fitting and fixture is going to go, um, oops, I just said how wonderfully sturdy crochet cotton is. Well, I just pulled so hard on it I broke it so I'm going to tuck that end in there and then I'm going to stitch in place a couple of times just to lock on that. I'll do that on the white so that it doesn't be quite so noticeable but then I'll carry on. I have a very, I have a friend who always would say when something like that happened oh I'll just carry on as if I'm in my right mind. So that's what you do when uh, unexpected things happen. You just carry on as if you were in your right mind. And eventually all will come to be all right. Okay, so we just keep sewing and stitching. And when I reach the top corner, I am going to then um, stitch in place several times because I want to lock that uh, stitching uh, securely in place because these pouches are meant to be very sturdy, handy sorts of things, and you don't want the stitching to come apart. And so that's why it's worthwhile doing that few extra lock stitches at the end to hold everything together. And so it will be a long-lasting pouch that's going to be excellent for years to come. Now, I know lots of people do throw their um, pot holders into the washing machine. Um, don't throw them in the dryer. Be, uh, let them ha um, hang to dry or lay flat to dry. Because um, I do, I have had the experience of them uh, shrinking. Now, see how I'm up here at this corner and I have gone through the loop here. I'm going to go under that loop and I'm going to stitch almost in a figure eight over this loop that um, goes over your connecting loop here at the top. I'm going to be stitching over that multiple times because I do want that to be really secure. And now, rather than just cutting it off here, I'm going to take, and I'm going to take my um, needle in and out, back, down, and through quite a few, oh, at least halfway back down, before I trim off my ends. And then then it's okay for me to trim it down here. Oh, one, one thing I usually do is I take it through one more time before I trim it off. Um, I am fanatical about really sewing on, sewing things together sturdily, which is great uh, for keeping them together, but it drives me nuts when I have to take things apart because it's really hard to take them apart when, the, when you've been so very careful about sewing them all together so well. So with this one, I am going to, let's see which hook will I use for this one. Okay, if I was going to use a carabiner, I would just take the carabiner, open it, slip it on, and there, that's connected. But if I wanted to use a toggle clip, I would take the toggle clip and I would put the loop through it 
and then I would now with this one it's going to be a bit tricky but usually what I find like with when I did this one it was very easy to put on so what I think I might do because this one is being a bit shirty about going on I might go get um, a, a round um, here I'll just I know I'll pull it up a bit more that'll give me a bit more loot let's see. ah that was the answer just pull up on your loop a bit and then you can get it over squeeze 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 still squeezing like crazy to get it to pass over the toggle ah uh, there we go there and now it's looped in and now I'm going to pull back up to pull that loop back down in so I had absolutely no trouble getting this one on I think what I would do for let's see how these ones go I think I'll put these ones on because you can pull them out more easily before you've sewn it together so see how I just pulled that out so there that was a whole lot easier I, I put this one on after I had sewn it together and um, I've never had it be so um, cranky about being uh, going over the thing. I think partly that was because I stitched it together so well there. So put your uh, toggle clip on first and that's going to make your uh, make it easier to uh, get it on there because you can pull up on the loop and then pull the loop back into place. And then uh, when I sew this up I will sew the um, through the 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 loops so that they won't pull up like that. I'll sew through both the corners. So I'm going to go and finish sewing together all of these um, squares and I'll uh, come back when I've got them all stitched together so you can see how all of these squares have turned into fine little pouches. So happy weaving and stay safe, be well and you know carrying your your own little personal uh, sanitizer. <laughs> Pretty good idea. And you never know when you're going to need it because if your dog does something silly then ugh, you don't have to deal with icky hands. Okay, I'm going to go sew and then I will come back and uh, show you a whole pile of the uh, squares. All done. Talk to you soon. I spent last evening sewing up this pile of of the um, pouches and one thing when I'm in a design process I never do just one thing one version of it or one iteration I have to do it um, over and over and over and over so that things will develop for me and I will get to explore all kinds of options now while I was working on um, stitching the the pouches up and uh, attaching various um, toggles and clips and clamps and things, it struck me, now this one, I've just um, used this, the, the little loop that was at the corner of the pouch, but as I was working away on it, I thought, oh, I should use another potholder loop to put a larger um, loop on the um, pouches so that you could either um, attach uh, any kind of clip or toggle to hang it with. But it also struck me we have um, a very tiny trailer that we go camping in, really tiny. And um, I mean, it's, it's seriously tiny. It's very cute. Anyhow, um, I thought, you know, this would be so handy for, now here I've just um, put a flashlight in it with the carabiner on it. I thought, if I had um, a longer loop, I could hang that loop over a knob or a hook to do things like hanging up a flashlight. Um, you could also hang uh, your, it on a um, uh, um, like the the handle. You know how the 
how uh, cars have that sort of grab uh, bar for getting in and out. And, um, you know, you can hang a flashlight or your sanitizer or whatever you want. Um, if you have a longer loop that, yes, you can use it for you know, attaching your toggles and things, but um, you could also just use that then for going over a knob or hanging where I got a, um, a, uh, a hook out, which is, um, you know, we have um, put some hooks into our trailer for hanging things on. And uh, so the longer loop struck me as being a very handy thing. And when I first started putting the loops on, they were, I was just folding the, the loop in half and attaching the loop that way. But I discovered a better way of doing that. And here's what I did. I used a crochet hook. I took the crochet hook through the, um, no, wait a second here. I have to rethink this. Okay. So I took the crochet hook through the loop and then I just spin the crochet hook like crazy to put a whole lot of twist onto the, um, the loop, which then makes the loop come together as, um, like as a single unit rather than having two, uh, folded loops coming together. Then I put the other end onto the crochet hook. Then I put the end of the crochet hook through the loop coming off of the um, pouch. And now I pull that loop through the loops of the twisted hanging loop. And I take and I catch the fold of the twisting hanging loop. I pull it through the loop off the hook and basically do a lark's head knot. So that now gives me a longer loop. And if you open up the edge of your, um, the top of your pouch, <coughs> pardon me, then uh, it pulls back on the uh, the single loop. So you can do things like attach um, a kilt pin or um, one of the toggles. Um, I found using split key rings and these are little clamps that we get at the hardware store and then they go on really nicely which is what I did on the original bottle. Uh, pouch bottle of uh, wasning and of course carabiners are such an easy solution they just clip into the pouch so there you have it a whole lot of solutions for carrying the pouches and um, lots of options for things uh, ways of storing them ways of carrying them when you're out and about whether it's walking or camping or in your uh, workshop when you want to stick a pair of pliers in a in a in a pouch and hang that up I'm always kind of misplacing my uh, my pliers and so having them hung on a, a, a hook or a knob is really handy. So are scissors. This would be great for carrying scissors. Depends on the size of your glasses. Your glasses can fit there too. So lots of great ways of using single uh, squares woven on the standard size pot holder loom. If you weave a larger um, uh, uh, square on the pro size pot holder loom then you'll get a larger pouch and that will work really well for uh, if you have uh, bigger sunglasses or bigger glasses right now with the big glass frames being in style the the larger size of the pro size pot holder uh, would make a better size pouch for large sunglasses or large glasses. But anyhow, I wish you happy weaving and happy, happy and safe outing and abouting. And I hope your dogs don't pick up things on the walk that make you go, Ugh. but if they do, then you have a way of dealing with it. Uh, be happy, be safe, be kind, be gentle to yourself and to others and take good care. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.